We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to read 1 to 3 and then we're going to skip down uh, to 5 through 17. 1 Corinthians 3, 1. I'm reading King James. It says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Somebody say, Lord, increase my capacity. Verse 3 says, For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Then verse 5, he says, Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that gives the increase. Now he that plants and he that waters are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. We can pause right there for a second. When we talk of capacity, I want you guys to just meditate on your journey. We've all come from different walks of life and God brought all of us into Alpha and Omega for a reason, for a season, for a purpose. Amen. Do you believe that? Do you know you're here for a reason? You're here on appointment. You're here on assignment. Amen. And the, wherever you were that God brought you from, as God was raising you, he was stretching you. But you began to outgrow that place. Because what God was beginning to show you and where God was beginning to lead you, as one of our youth just said, God will give you shepherds after my heart. There was something in your spirit, you began to recognize the capacity I have. I need somebody that can handle my capacity. And maybe you looked in many different places and you didn't find it until you came to Alpha and Omega. And you met a woman called Apostle Esther. And the rest is history. Amen. She had the capacity. Why am I stressing this? It's very important because sometimes we will try to force things and force situations and even force ourselves into situations until sometimes God himself has to come and close the door to tell you this does not have the capacity for you. And what I really want you to hit on today, there's two main things I really want us to understand as we're talking about pillars. You have to know yourself. You must have a deep sense of identity. Because if you do not know yourself, you will place yourself in a place that cannot handle your capacity. Who are you? Who has God called you to be? We are here to honor our pillars, but there's something. The Bible says that the anointing and the oil that flows from the top is the same one that goes all the way down. So while we have pillars, that means there is a homework for you and I. That means there is something for you and I that we need to get ourselves planted. We need to get ourselves rooted. We need to get ourselves established. We need to get ourselves sturdy. Pillars. Have a deep sense of knowing who you are. And Alpha and Omega, God is calling us to the next season, to the next level. To the next dimension. And we do not have time to be questioning who we are. We do not have time to be wondering who has God called us to be. Where is God calling you to stand? We have a leader. We have a shepherd. And as you go into it, the more God grows you, you begin to understand that you need your shepherd. You need your shepherd. Sometimes people think, yeah, I can outgrow myself and stand. That's well and good. But a really mature person will know I need my shepherd. I need that covering. 
There's a saying that says the mark of maturity in a man is he that will look for a place to submit. That's how you know a mature person. The mature person is not the one that can say, I will do whatever I want whenever I do it. Nobody can check me. The mature person will look for that one person that can check them. Because they know that if you leave me to myself, I will destroy myself. We need our shepherd. We need our shepherd. On one side, there is the assignment of God through the shepherd for you. That you will do good to understand so you stay in alignment. Because the blessing of God will not skip your shepherd to come to you. The Bible says what? It is the oil that flows from the top. So you need to ask yourself, who's your head? But we are blessed in Alpha and Omega. Amen. Because our head is solid. Our head is strong. Our head is blessed. The oil is flowing. Amen. Somebody shout, the oil is flowing. The oil is flowing. And how do we tap into that? By knowing who we are. By knowing who we are. And so you can position yourself accordingly. You stand in that place and say, Father God, if this is the place of assignment you've called me, I'm standing here. I'm standing here fully. Have a deep sense of identity. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 27, the story that Jesus gave about the foolish and the wise builder. And as we are reading in 1 Corinthians, Paul is talking about laying that foundation. And then Jesus says, he that will listen to my word and do it, I will liken him to a wise builder. But then he says, he that will listen to my word and not do it, I will liken him to the foolish builder. Both were built. On the outside, they both looked like they had built a house. But something came to prove which one was really a house. The rains came. The storm came. The wind blew. And then it was evident what kind of foundation had been laid. So what is your foundation? We're talking about pillars. And it's good and well enough. And Omega will say, yes, apostle, we love you. Pastor Solomon, we love you. But it's got to go beyond that. It's got to go beyond that. The Bible literally says that zeal without knowledge is dangerous. And some of us have very good intentions. But without understanding, we find ourselves falling wayward. We find ourselves being pushed aside. We find ourselves becoming the prey of the enemy. Because in that place, you begin to run ahead of what God would have you to do. You begin to go ahead. Jesus said when the storm came, that house crumbled. And it said great was the destruction thereof. Why do you need to have a deep sense of yourself? Because everything that you carry is determined in your identity. All that you are, all that you will be is in your identity. If you don't know who you are, you will not be able to be effective. If we talk about the capacity and the stretching that happens for Alpha and Omega to be where Alpha and Omega is today. And for Alpha and Omega to go where Alpha and Omega will go tomorrow. It's all rooted in the beginning, the seed of that identity. To know we are called to nations. Uh, to know we are called to tear down the kingdom of darkness. To know we are called to bring deliverance to people. And we begin to walk it out. You must know yourself. You must know yourself. And for you to know yourself, God is going to test you. God is going to stretch you. God is going to prove you to see, can I trust you? Can I trust you? Do you know who you are? Oh, when people begin to say one thing, you say, oh, maybe they're right. Maybe this is what I am. And then they'll say something else. You say, oh, okay, maybe this is what I am. And we're celebrating Pastor's Appreciation Day today. And there's something the Holy Spirit was really convicting me about. There is an ignorance that is creeping in the world that is starting to creep into the body of Christ. Where you hear people say things like, I don't care about titles. And they think it sounds righteous. They think it sounds good. But if this God cares about titles, how can you say you don't care about titles?
It's not even deep. A mother is a title. A father is a title. A husband is a title. A wife is a title. So if we say we don't care about titles, and you are a mother who say, I don't care about titles, what if your children don't care about your title and they'll call you anyhow? What's happening in society today? What about a man who says, I don't like this title of a man? Well, look at the world today and you see what's happening. A woman who says, I don't like the title of a woman. Parents who will say, I don't like the title of a parent. God will test us and God will prove us. As you keep reading 1 Corinthians 3, he says that every man's work will be tried. God called you a leader. God called you a father, a mother, a pastor, a minister, a deacon. He has a reason for that. And he is going to call you and say, I called you a pastor. What did you do? I called you a mother. What did you do? I called you a minister. What did you do? The title is not the enemy. Pride is our enemy. The title is not wrong. It is the pride that the enemy tries to bring in. There is a need for that title. And in our ignorance, then we begin to fail to honor people. The kingdom of God is all about honor. We have to honor. We must. Who you honor, that determines where you go. And for some of us, maybe this is a place to check ourselves. Because if our life does not reflect the life of our leader, do you honor? A lack of honor will break the flow of the oil. A lack of honor will break the flow of the oil. The oil will not flow where there is no honor. It won't. Have a deep sense of who you are. Know who you are. Know who you are. And lastly, as I get ready to round up, the second thing, you must have a deep sense of responsibility. When you know who you are, you understand the assignment. When you know who you are, you understand the assignment. Sometimes we sit and we marvel. We have, I still marvel. I look at Apostle. At one point, sometimes I'll sit with her. I'll say, Apostle, I want to be like you. Then I'll come back and say, I don't want to be like you because it's too much. But she understands who she is. So she understands the responsibility that comes with who she is. So while you sit and you feel sorry for her, mommy, please rest. Mommy, please eat. Mommy, do this. She's not bothered because that came with the call. As she understood who she was, she understood the price that she will have to pay to be that. A deep sense of responsibility. Alpha and Omega, we are challenging you. Yeah, we are standing here today. Ordained pastors, we are not the only ones. There's many more pastors in this room. There's many more called to be ministers in this room. There's many more called to be deacons in this room. But will you be willing to pay the price? Will you be willing to pay the price? Having a deep sense of responsibility. Apostle is going to pray. If she comes to church and you're not here, you think she's not going to still have a Holy Ghost party? Prayer line happens every day. We're not in anybody's home. If you're not on prayer line, you think she's not going to be on prayer line? When she has to minister to people and others are not there, you think she's still not going to do it? But some of us, if somebody says a little thing, you get offended. God, I don't want to do it no more. And we say these things. Imagine having a relationship with somebody and every little offense that comes, you threaten to leave me. How do I trust you? How do I trust you? Every time somebody hurts you, it, even, it doesn't even have anything to do with me. But because they hurt you, you want to take it out on me. On the work that I called you to do, on the assignment that I gave you to do, you want to take it out on me. How can I trust you? How can I trust you? 
being a pillar, being willing to say, God, though he slay me, I will still trust. Father God, that will abuse me, I will still be here. I am crying, I will still serve. I am broken, I will still pray. Lord, I will still stand. That is a pillar, a deep sense of responsibility. And in closing, I'll say this, why you need to know that is because a pillar, I said this earlier, when you understand who the shepherd is, you know you need the shepherd. We say all these things, uh, there's many parables, the Bible says that the shepherd will leave the 99 for that one. He will go, that's the heart of the shepherd. But there's something profound that we never talk about. Jesus said, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. As long as the shepherd is there, there is hope for that one. But if you strike the shepherd, the sheep scatter. That's the responsibility of a pillar. When you begin to know, Lord, letting go is not an option. Quitting is not an option. I have to stand because there's destinies at stake. There is lives at stake. I cannot give up. I cannot quit. I cannot stop. Somebody say, I am a pillar. Come on, convince yourself. I am a pillar. I am a pillar. And when you begin to own that, you stand on it. God makes grace available. Amen. He's not calling you to do a failed work. He's not calling you to do something that he's not going to empower you to do. Apostle and Pastor Solomon are there. They've been pillars for us. But now they need us. There's more heights for them to climb. There's more places for them to reach. More heights for them to attain. But will you be standing in your post? Will I be standing in my post? Can we stand to hold them and say, go ahead, we got you. Go ahead, we got you. Can we please stand up? As I'm ending t uh, this morning, this afternoon, I really want us to just earnestly ask the Lord, Father God, give me the grace to stand. Honestly, if you're an Alpha and Omega, it's not an accident. We say this all the time, but unless you know it for yourself, it will sound like we're just talking. You have to know you're not here by accident. We all have a part to play. We all have something to do. The work is big. The work is big. Will you hold your part and somebody else hold their part? There's a saying that says one person cannot do everything, but if everybody do, does something, everything will get done. So I want us to earnestly pray to the Lord and ask him, Father, give me the grace. Give me the grace to be a pillar. Father God, give me a deep sense of identity. For some of us, it has been discouragement that has been whispering in your ear and it's making you forget and you begin to say things that are contrary to where God is taking you. You're literally speaking against the assignment of God for your life. Father God, give us grace to stand as pillars. Give us grace to stand as pillars. Give us grace to hold on to our responsibility. Father, we will stand. Father, we will stand. Father, we will stand. At this moment, I just want to say, Apostle Esther and Pastor Solomon, you guys have been pillars. You have been pillars. And you are a model of pillars for us. And I know I said this privately. I'll say it in public. We really want to make you proud. We don't want to be the reason why you cry. We don't want to be the reason why you question we will make you proud. You don't have to worry, are they behind me? Don't worry, you just look ahead. We are right there with you. We are right there with you. We are right there with you. We love you, we honor you, we celebrate you. And briefly, I'd like us to read the word of God. 
Galatians. Galatians 2. We're just going to read uh, two verses and we're good. If you don't mind, please, for the furtherance of God's word, for honoring the word of God, can you rise on your feet if you'd opened up Galatians 2? And I need us to read together. Is everyone there? If you're there, say amen. All right, can we read together? One, two, go. Galatians 2 from verse 8 to 10. Galatians 2, verse 8 to 10. Can we read? One, two, go. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Galatians. And when James, Cephas, verse 10, You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. All right. Just briefly, I know that we talked about the topic. We're talking about pillars, but I'd like to rephrase it. Pillars, the church. Somebody say, pillars, the church. I didn't, I didn't hear you say. Look, somebody say, neighbor, the topic is pillars, the church. Say to the next person, say, pillars, the church. It is very true that we understand that Apostle Esther and Pastor Solomon are the pillars of the church that God has put before us as our father and our mother to keep guiding our steps. But I want to explain to you a few things that would make you take your place as a pillar. Without you, there is no church. Without your presence here, there is no church. This scripture, this scripture showed us Apostle Paul talking about how he had people help him in the way. Remember that Paul was once called Saul. And his duty as Saul was to kill Christians. And then when he got the call of God on his life, the Christians that he once killed, he started to preach to them. It's no surprise that they didn't believe him. It wasn't a surprise. Because if you were killing us, and all of a sudden you say you got called, I would believe as though you would just want to put us in a place together and just kill all of us. So they didn't believe him. They did not believe him. But he made mention of three men that stood for him. And the Bible says in verse 9, he called these men what? The pillars. You see, the beauty of a building is on top. It's what you see. But the strength of the building is in the pillars. The work of a pastor is very big. We can't start breaking it down. I can't, I can't do that. Maybe a pastor can because she knows it all. But I will tell you for free that it's not easy. God calls men to be pastors to shake the earth. I will give you pure examples of that. Apostle Paul was one of them that he called. And he, in his time, he shook the cities of Greece. There were riots everywhere because of Apostle Paul. Here in America, remember Martin Luther King. He made it clear to the Pope. Because the Pope at the time hid scriptures from Christians. For over 300 years. But the call on his life gave him the authority to stand in the place. To challenge one of the greatest authorities in Christian religion. Our, our 
apostle, Apostle Esther, has been called to war against the kingdom of darkness in the stead of deliverance. It's not an easy job. I would also tell you that no, no pastor goes on vacation like that. They don't just go on vacation. They're on a 24-7 hour call. It's either they're praying for you or they're studying the word to feed you or they're doing something that will benefit you. But understand that they are feeding you to strengthen the work. They are not feeding you to go and strengthen another work. They are feeding you to do what? Strengthen this work. It is important to know that all of Apostle's prayers, all of the time she spends in the secret place, is because of you. She has left it all. All she had studied, she has left it all. All that gave her good money, she has left it. All that gave her joy to pursue a career, she has left it. But she picked a call because she wants you to succeed in what she has left. I will go back to the definition of a pillar. Pastor Benny has done a great job. But in my words, I will say a pillar is a long vertical structure used to support the building. Any building that doesn't have support doesn't stand. Forget how, how much they put down to build the house. It won't stand. So you have a critical role in ensuring that this call stands. And I also want you to understand that being a pillar doesn't make you run the show. It's not about you. Neither is it about apostle. She does as she's led. Because we find ourselves in times where people find themselves in spaces of authority and they want to run the show. If it's not my way, it's not going to happen. But as a pillar, that's not your job. I might sound very, very tough, but this is the word of the Lord. The three men that Paul talked about in the Bible were men that strengthened the work of his hands. The men that he made reference to. He said, these were the ones that understood what I was talking about. And they were the ones that stood for me. They were not the ones that told me what to do and how to do the work that I've been called for. But they supported the work that God has called me for. The way I told them to. Being a pillar is the best thing you can be. Why? Somebody ask me why. No, you don't want to know. Say why. Pastor Benny said it clear. The anointing flows from where? Down where? What, what's the place of a pillar in the building? Where is the place of a pillar in the building? Is it the top? It stands from the bottom to a, to a certain level, right? But the anointing flows from the head toward the bottom. So it flows down to the people that are the pillars. So it means there is a source that comes to you as a pillar. But only when you decide to be a pillar. Ask them, who the men say I am? They told him. He asked, who do you say I am? Do you really call apostle, apostle in your heart? Do you really call Pastor Solomon, Pastor Solomon in your heart? Or you say, that man. 
Or you see apostles, ah, this is 11. We are not gone. Ah, ah. This is what we'll be doing. But she's not doing it for herself. She's filling you, the pillar. She's strengthening you, the pillar. Everything she does is because of the pillar. And you are the pillar. The Bible says, I will build my church. And the gates of hell can't prevail. But it's a proper decision for you. You see, even Jesus says, I stand at the door of your heart. And I knock. He's king of kings, he's lord of lords, he's omnipresent, he's omniscient. He can be at any place, any time. But he comes to the door. He doesn't force you. Neither does he beg you, but he stands there. If only you know. The Bible says, let the eye of our understanding be open. If only you realize the authority in who we have. If only you decide to understand. The Bible says, all, in all that getting God, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. He didn't say the Lord will give you. Remember when Solomon was asking for knowledge, for wisdom. He, he went to the Lord. The Lord knew that Solomon needed wisdom to rule his people. But Solomon had to ask of the Lord. So I need you to ask of wisdom. So that you understand when others are behaving in a certain way, you don't behave because you have understanding. Okay? So I quickly want to have a very short time. What does it take to be a pillar? Somebody say, what does it take to be a pillar? First off, respecting the authority over you shows understanding of what you truly are meant to be and do. Without the knowledge of your role in the church, you won't function properly. If you are the pillar, what then is your role? If there is a source from above feeding the pillar, what is the pillar's role to the source? It's critical. Ask yourself a question. Every other day, sit yourself down, ask yourself. The ones that pray for us, for me, what is my responsibility to them? The ones that watch over me, even without my knowledge, how do I show to them that I truly appreciate their time, their efforts, and their resources? How best can I be a support system to them? Of course, they won't leave the job, but it takes your support to keep that oil flowing like a river. If they are discouraged, imagine if Paul did not have these three men, how he would feel. He might have decided to pack his things and go to another city that would welcome him. Do not discourage the one that falls into you. Do not Frustrate the one that pours into you. Do not say evil things about the ones, the ones that fall into you. It's easy to say, oh, apostle is praying for us, but you don't know the capacity in which he prays. I bet you don't know. I have, I've had the privilege to be with her, to live in the house, and I... I I have asked myself over again, do I really want to be like this woman? And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says that the success of a believer starts from his home. Now, she's focusing on people that are not in her home. Right? Like she has children that are outside of her home. 
the efforts that she's supposed to use to build a home, she's building your home. So imagine that you do not really, really see the importance of what she does. God forbid, Pastor Remu goes south, she goes wayward. God forbid. Just imagine the pain she will feel that she spent the time on the ones that she was called for. But she didn't pay time on her home. It's a critical thing. Those of us that have children, just imagine you have three kids. And the call of God hits you because it's, you, we are choiceless when it comes to the call of God. Remember what God did to Jonah? Remember how God calls his own? He doesn't, he doesn't spare you. If he calls you, he calls you. If, you. if you run away, you can't run. You can't run. So imagine that God has called you. And then you have kids in a very early age. And then all your time, energy, resources that you're supposed to make. God tells you, leave your job. Leave where it gives you resources, where it gives you income. Leave everything and build these people. Day and night, you pray day and night, morning, afternoon, evening for protection, for preservation, for provision for certain people. And at the end of the day, they abandon you on the wayside. It's a feeling that you as a person would not want to have. So in this place today, we're going to spend very few minutes to really pray for them. But in this place today, I need you to take a pause. Do this on a daily basis. Even when evil news comes to you about things they did or things they did not do. Just sit down critically and think about it. Carefully. Think about it. Put yourself in the situation and really think about it. And that will determine your next action. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 119, 185, the word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. For Apostle Solomon and, and for Apostle Esther and Pastor Solomon, this, is, this has been their core values. Even in times where people say it's okay people spread rumors. They keep waiting on the Lord. They believe strongly that the next path to take, the Lord is the light that guides them. And the Lord is the light of their path. Sometimes, in the busyness of your schedule, think about the ones that have authority over you. Be it your father, be it your mother, be it your boss. Think about why they need you. Think of why Apostle needs you. Think of what will happen if we are not in this place. Just take a pause time. And the Lord will help us and guide us all. Can we rise on our feet? We'll say a few prayers. We'll say a few prayers and then we're done. Let's just lift our hands as a sign of reverence to God and lifting of our spiritual father and mother and, and in, in the calmness of your heart just decree to say father say father we pray that the spirit of the Lord we pray that the spirit of wisdom the spirit of knowledge the spirit of counsel shall rest upon our leaders in Jesus name Somebody just open up your mouth and pray. Lift your hands to the throne of heaven. Just pray and decree over Apostle Solomon, Apostle Esther, that the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of the law, the spirit of counsel shall be bestowed upon them in times of, of, of hard, hard hardship. In, in times where they are weary, where they feel like giving up on the call, where they feel like it's too heavy to bear. Let the spirit of the Lord awaken strength in them. Pray that the Lord will stretch his hands on them on a daily basis. That he shall energize them. That he shall energize them. He shall give them the power to go forth. He shall give them the power to push. He shall give them the power to take you to the next level. 
Somebody open up your mouth and decree for your leaders. Lift your hands, lift your hands, somebody, and pray for the ones that rule over you. The ones that are called your leaders, the one that is apostles, the one that's called apostle, the one that's called pastors over you. Somebody pray that the Spirit of the Lord will do for them what only Him can do. Thank you, Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Two more prayer points. We're going to pray for the Lord to infill us with wisdom to be what we are meant to be to them. I don't, there are so many things to start telling you how to be, behave like a pillar. But the spirit of the Lord, that is the spirit of understanding, can make you on a daily basis understand what to do. How many of you believe that he can do that for you? So if you believe, look up to the heavens and say, Father, we look up to you and ask from your throne of grace that you bestow upon us the wisdom to be who we are meant to be to our leaders. Somebody open up your mouth and just ask from the most high God to fill you with the wisdom, the, the, the knowledge to do what you are meant to do. There is so much to be done. There is so much to do to support this work. Somebody pray, open up your mouth that the spirit of God will fill your heart. The spirit of God will fill your heart. It will fill your heart and lead you on a daily basis on what to do. On a daily basis on what to do. Somebody open up your mouth and pray. Open up your mouth and pray. Open up your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And lastly, we're going to pray for this house. We're going to pray that the Lord will continually raise men to be pillars. Raise men to be financial pillars. Raise men to be spiritual pillars. Raise men to be pillars in every sphere that we need them. Somebody open up your mouth and pray. Decree over Alpha and Omega that the Lord will continually raise men. Men to support this work. Men to stand in for the apostle. Men that will be financial pillars. Men that will be spiritual pillars. Men that will be emotional pillars. To stand in there. To make sure the work keeps going. Somebody open up your mouth. Pray, pray, pray. Open up your mouth. Decree and declare. Clear, decree and declare that the Lord will raise men. The Lord will bring men from the east, the west, and the north and the south. Men that will stand in the place to ensure this work keeps going forth. Oh Lord, we ask for help. We ask, oh God, that you shall lift up men here. Raise men, raise men, raise men. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you believe God has answered some prayers that you pray, somebody make a shout to the Lord. Hallelujah.